welcome to another Lunch and Learn. Uh, I'm Kevin Holbrook. Today we're going to cover working with speed pack and lightweight mode. Now this is a, a topic that probably between the two has been uh, beat to death a little bit over the last several years. Lightweight uh, speed pack being a fairly newer technology. But I wanted to kind of dig in a little further with the technology and just give you some insight into when and how to interact with the two tools. Um, I think there's some uh, propensity to not to use these two tools because of maybe uh, not understanding um, where you are and what's really happening. So I'm, I've got some examples. I'm going to make some things kind of happen live and we're going to kind of work through some of this uh, with both speed pack and lightweight so that we understand exactly what the software is trying to do. Now, neither one of these are perfect technologies that um, you just turn on and forget. These are both technologies that you need to be aware of what's going on, what it's trying to do, and work with it with the understanding that you are working with it. So um, that's kind of what our focus to today's webinar is going to be. So our agenda, very simple. We're going to talk about lightweight mode, what it is, how to activate and deactivate, and understanding what it's doing. Same thing with speed pack. Okay, we're going to be clear about uh, all the pieces of that. Um, again, as always, through the presentation, if you have any questions, please post them in the question section of the GoToWebinar window. I will take those uh, responses there at the end. So lightweight mode, uh, what is it? Essentially, this came about uh, to help SOLIDWORKS at some point in time in handling large assemblies. Now, I've been at this for 16 years uh, working for CAD Dimensions. And, you know, in the early days, we used to talk large assemblies as 100, 200 components. The capabilities weren't where they are today, obviously. Um, but as things increased and people started to doing plant design and really large equipment, uh, you know, the amount of load time for a large assembly uh, increased. So lightweight mode is essentially to reduce uh, the amount of load time and memory usage. Now, how it does that is it loads only a subset of the data into memory. Now, this is probably a good time to talk a little bit about the structure of a SOLIDWORKS file. Um, if you've ever noticed when you open a, a SOLIDWORKS model, even a large model, before it's fully open, you can see it. That's because there is some graphical data that is stored within the SOLIDWORKS file that can get opened up. <coughs> Related to that is also something we call tessellation data, or data that's opened up in, in e-drawings. Now, this data is more of a uh, body data. It has a little more information to it. Obviously, in e-drawings, you can measure. But this data also gets stored within the model as well. Now, what we're doing with lightweight mode is we're loading that subset of data. We're loading the body data into memory. Now, because the body data is a direct reflection of the solid geometry, we can do a lot of different things in here. Okay, we'll talk about that. Now, SOLIDWORKS, the intention is that if you're working in this lightweight mode, that SOLIDWORKS will load the data it needs when it needs it. Now, I'm here to say that maybe not in every case it loads what it needs, so you might have to be uh, cognizant of what is and isn't loaded, and that's part of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but essentially, SOLIDWORKS should try to load the data it needs as you work. Now, how do you set something to lightweight mode? <clears throat> well, in the open dialog and recent dialog, there's a pull-down menu where we can pick large design review or large assembly mode. Uh, there is also an option for lightweight, which you see to the left there. While a document's open, you can right-click on the assembly and set the resolved assembly to lightweight. So I can set it that way. And then there's something also called large assembly mode, which is essentially a threshold 
that once the assembly reaches a certain number, it automatically turns it on. Now you can determine for your machine what that number is. Uh, uh, 500 is what it's set at by default. So I think most, probably most of you online understand uh, how to activate Lightweight. I want to go in a little bit further here. Now we're not here to talk about all the things that it can be done, but I have them listed here just because you really can do a lot. <coughs> Excuse me, if something is loaded lightweight, including adding mates, creating features, measuring, collision, um, those types of things all can be done while in lightweight mode. Okay, and this is all in the help so you can dig in a little further as far as what you can do. Just keep in mind that if you try to do something that can't be done in lightweight, SOLIDWORKS is supposed to load it for you. So, um, you know, there's a sense that SOLIDWORKS is going to help you right along. <coughs> now, when does SOLIDWORKS gain access to that additional data? Let's dig a little further into this. Now, anytime you edit a part, edit a feature, edit a sketch, that's a a real common trigger for the software to say, you know what, I no longer have enough in the body data. I have to load the entire part fully resolved. Now I'm also going to show you some options that are related to this called the out of date options for the software to understand really what's going on with the references and relationships uh, related to a file. Now sometimes there's global operations like equations and exporting. Uh, if you try to export out, uh, let's say, a step file, you will have to load the data in order to export that out. Now, the exception to that is a TIFF and a JPEG. Now, when it comes to loading the data, you can tell it to always load the data or to prompt you. Prompt you is, is the software saying, hey, you know what, I can't do this unless you load everything. Do you want to load? Yes or no. Now, there are some common reasons why things may not load. Now, uh, why, why they may not load uh, lightweight. Um, so if you try to load an assembly, sometimes things will load, and I'll show you here in just a moment, fully resolved. You know, sometimes if it's part of a feature scope, an assembly feature, or a flexible sub-assembly must load uh, fully resolved. Sometimes the software sees an external reference that needs to update, so it won't load it lightweight for that. Maybe uh, your component is mated to a flexible sub or mated to an assembly feature. Okay, or if the component is updated since the assembly was last saved. That's another common reason why something won't load lightweight. So let's just jump into the software for a second here. And let's, uh, let's uh, show a few examples. So I'm going to get mine through the recent documents. I just have a couple of examples. Uh, in the recent documents, I have the same menu structure that I have in File Open where I can select and open a document in Lightweight. Now, Lightweight should definitely load faster than anything you have. Um, you can see already that one of the things we're going to talk about next is that you know there is a potential for errors that could be caused by this lightweight mode. Now, if I collapse this, <coughs> my initial thought as a user is, what did I do? Why do I have an issue with this subassembly? In this particular case, the subassembly is flexible. And you'll notice that there is no uh, feather on the subassembly. Now the feather is what lets the software know that this is loaded lightweight. Now let's take a look at a lightweight assembly here and I'll just expand it. You'll notice this subassembly, uh, there are no mates folder within it. So you can't, it doesn't load the mates for the subassemblies when you load it lightweight. If I expand an individual component, the only thing that you'll see is planes. However, the component does exist. Uh, it highlights in the graphics area. It happens to be this component here. Um, you have all the body data that you need. 
Now, I mentioned when the software will load. If I happen to right-click on this file and do an edit part, the software in the background, SOLIDWORKS should load this data. So now that same motor has all the features that I would expect, and it's loaded in. Now, once I exit out of that part, I can go ahead now, and this is where we can uh, start to load and unload the subassemblies set them back to lightweight. So I can say set the resolve to lightweight. Now it's going to ask me if I want to save the modified documents. So there's a document that was affected by that because I made a change essentially to the motor. It asked for a save and you can see now that it is uh, fully loaded here. I'm sorry, in lightweight mode. So edit is going to very quickly and easily show that. Now, if I expand a little further here, um, I've got an issue to a, in a derived hole pattern. Now, a derived hole pattern uh, is essentially uh, an external reference to a pattern from another component. And you can see that the error exists. Now, I don't know if this is real or not, and when you're working in lightweight, one of the things that you tend to do is first question whether or not you've loaded enough data to fully resolve that particular feature. Okay, you can see that all the components uh, within this subassembly are still loaded lightweight. So the first thing I might do in a case of any kind of issue like this is take that subassembly set all the lightweight components to resolved to see if it helps with the issue. Now you can see in this particular case that it, it did not help. Um, it uh, doesn't seem to uh, fix the issue. Now this is clearly a uh, flexible subassembly. Now what I would probably do next is open it in its own window and make sure everything's fully resolved and control Q it. Now I happen to know how to, to get past this one, which just happens to be because of lightweight. I'm able to make the subassembly rigid and then make it flexible again. And now it updates, essentially rebuilds, instead of going to the other window. Uh, it's not necessarily an error. Uh, even though it shows in there, once you load everything lightweight, that wouldn't even show up uh, within the interface. So there is your, your lightweight piece. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the options related to lightweight. Under performance in system options is a section uh, with information about lightweight components. So here, uh, this automatically load lightweight components uh, is used in another section for that large assembly mode, but specifically these two areas here. How does the software check for an out-of-date lightweight component? And I'll, I'll show you exactly where that is. Right now it's set to always resolve. And resolve lightweight components, I mentioned if you make a change and it needs to resolve something, do you want it to prompt or to always rebuild those? Okay. So I'm just going to close this down for a moment. Because this one's loaded uh, in large assembly mode, um, I don't have the ability to make the change as I would expect. Now I'm going to change this to, uh, and we'll, we'll make it always resolve here. Now I'm going to open up another example that has uh, maybe a little bit different uh, issues associated with it. So let's go in here, down, and set this to lightweight. Now, in this particular case, you'll notice that all of the subassemblies came in with the feather. So it was able to get the subassembly loaded lightweight. All the mates uh, are unloaded. However, underneath the components, you'll notice some of the components automatically got resolved. Specifically, in this case, uh, a, a, a subcomponent with configurations. Notice the socket cap screw automatically got loaded. Now, first thing you would 
probably try to do is right click on that subassembly and say, hey, you know what? Set all the resolve to lightweight. And it says in this case that, you know what? Some of those components have been modified. Now that's a very quick and easy trigger that says, hey, when I tried to open this lightweight, it had to load all that data because something was out of date. Okay, so let's talk about how to visualize that out of date a little differently. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to performance here and it's in this check out of date lightweight components instead of telling the software to automatically resolve them I'm going to tell it just to indicate whether an update is necessary. Okay, so in order to do this I've, I've got a, a very simple example here um, to show you. I have just an assembly with two parts that I'm going to open up lightweight. You'll notice that the component block uh, does come in as lightweight, no problem. Now what happens when I make changes to the block? Okay, so I'm going to just close down this, open up the block in its own window, and I'm going to add a configuration. Okay. So I'm making a change to this thing. We'll call this my B size. And in my B size configuration, this thing's going to be 6 inches wide. Okay. I can still save the assembly and close our part and close it out. Now, when I open that new assembly, that same assembly in lightweight, let's watch what happens you'll notice that it does not resolve the component. Reason A is that the A size configuration did not change. So it did not have to resolve it because the body data exists completely within the part. So let's make another change to that original file here. I'm going to open up my block. And on the, the B size, uh, let's change a dimension. I'm going to go from 6 to 5.5. So now I'm making a change to the file, but I'm changing it on the version that's not used in the assembly. So if I, once again, do an open on the subassembly, it says, hey, wait a minute here. Okay, something's changed. And you can see by making a change there, uh, that it did have an issue. Now, let me just make sure performance that I got that set right to indicate. All right. So, all right, I've changed the, changed the size in both. It, it loaded it automatically. Now, one more shot here. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to open my block once again. And now on my B size, I'm going to add a new feature. Okay, so we'll just uh, cut a hole in this thing, do a through all cut. Now this is the size that's not used in the assembly. I'm going to switch back to my A size. You can see that that does not exist. Now watch what happens when I once again do a file open on that upper level assembly. It did not fully resolve it because it didn't have to. It didn't see there was a change to that body data, but it does see that there's a change. Now this yellow, um, yellow or reddish feather uh, is just an indicator letting you know that there has been a change to the file and that you may need to update it. And that's what's controlled by this performance check out of date lightweight components indicate. Um, this is what's going to automatically um, give you that little feather there. Now, uh, what you have to do at this point is to fully resolve this thing, and that's your only option here is to set the resolve, which will update it. Okay, so the flags are really twofold. The software is going to determine um, when a change is necessary. If you're changing an, a different configuration, it won't necessarily load it. If you're changing a, a, a different configuration and it drives something from the original, like I did with A, uh, it will prompt for a load. Uh, in the third scenario is if you change a configuration 
and add a feature, uh, it will tell you that it's out of date and uh, indicate that instead of automatically loading it. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about toolbox data. Now I'm going to go ahead and just insert some components here. And let me browse to these. I have uh, just a socket cap screw um, that's in a couple different sizes here. So we'll change out a couple sizes. Okay, and we'll go ahead and save this. All right. Now, the different sizes, when we look at the socket cap screw, um, you'll notice that the assembly that I opened earlier loaded the socket head cap screws automatically. And that's because it doesn't have all the body data necessary for that upper level assembly, so it has to load them all. Now, I'm going to simulate this through a function in configurations. I'm going to actually purge all the data, purge the body data and the save mark for the components here. Basically saying it won't have enough information when I open that upper level. So now when I go to open this particular sample assembly here in Lightweight, okay, it tells me it needs a rebuild and you can see that it had to load the socket head cap screw. So how do I get around this type of scenario where I have a part with multiple configurations that just keeps loading. What I need to do is go to that socket cap screw and I'm going to activate each configuration and activating that configuration puts this check mark, this rebuild, save mark, make sure that it has that data within the file. Now when I save it, it has all the body data within the file and when I do it open, on the assembly in lightweight. Okay. <clears throat> the only thing it's indicating is that there's still another change here, but it still was able to load those lightweight. Now, uh, in this case, it's probably related to the table and updating the table. However, in a lot of cases, when it's loading that like that, it's because the body data does not exist in all the configurations. So very simple uh, way of looking at that. So my story with uh, lightweight mode is not to not use it, but to recognize what the software is trying to do. Um, here are some things to watch out for. I just showed you the multiple configurations not loading lightweight. Um, some mates might require resolution you kind of saw that with a derived pattern, but if you're trying to do some of the advanced mates, the software may require a full load of the file in order to get it right, to, to remove any errors. Um, if a mate error occurs, definitely resolve the components, um, just in case SOLIDWORKS did not recognize that it needed to be resolved. It's, uh, it's not a perfect technology. Um, if you get an error, just load it. Um, you don't have to load the whole assembly, but load the areas and see if that goes away. Now, uh, mass properties. Uh, when you go to do mass properties for a lightweight assembly, it should prompt you uh, to load the components for mass properties. They don't update in lightweight. The other thing that I've seen a lot of is tables and parametric notes. Um, Specifically, I've seen an example where uh, the bill of materials was completely out of date in lightweight mode. Uh, you can do lightweight on a drawing as well. And uh, when you fully resolve the assembly, everything up is up to date. Um, those are things that are kind of known to be uh, an issue. Um, I would just, uh, at that point, know that it's there and resolve when you're completing uh, the assembly. Um, you can try resolving it just to make sure uh, everything looks good, but you can still work in that lightweight mode with that understanding. <coughs> so uh, lightweight mode, uh, be aware that you may need to load that data to clear up some issues to recognize. Um, but it will absolutely save you to some time. 
uh, once you get used to what it's trying to do here, um, you know, you'll be able to utilize lightweight mode. It's a, it's, it's a technology that uh, you just have to understand in order to use. So uh, let's continue on. Talk same conversation about speed pack. Lightweight loads the body data. Speed pack automatically loads the graphical data. So in the graphics area, the ability to see the model, the colors, and pan, zoom, and rotate that, you get that with Speedpack. Um, it does, has the same goal. It's used to reduce the amount of load time and memory for large models. Um, on top of the graphical data, you can choose to load body data with it. So in lightweight, we just load body data and that's it. Um, with Speedpack, we can use both graphical and body, but we can choose what body data gets loaded. We don't have that option in lightweight. Now, this is different than lightweight in that SOLIDWORKS will not load the data you need while you work. It's up to you to go back and update your Speedpack and load that data. I'll show you how that works. Uh, when used in assemblies, it eliminates the need for sending referenced files. Excuse the spelling error there. Uh, reference, uh, if I speed pack an assembly, I can send you an assembly file in no parts, and everything will be contained in there that you might need. So speed pack uh, is, manifests itself in SOLIDWORKS as a derived configuration. A um, couple things with configurations that I want to point out. Uh, if you're a longtime user of SOLIDWORKS, you know that adding configurations increases file size. Now, if you had an assembly with multiple sizes and wanted to add a configuration, a speed pack configuration for all of the existing configurations, obviously you're increasing the file size uh, by doubling the configurations. Uh, the configuration, derived configuration used in Speedback will actually increase the file size more than regular configurations. And this is simply because this is a uh, all-in-one tool. When you tell it what to include, uh, when you tell it to include body data from a part, it's got to embed that in the assembly in that configuration. So it gets a little bit larger to be able to take information typically found at the part and put it in the assembly. Now all of this is viewed through uh, a graphic circle. Um, I'll show you that in just a moment. Let's take a look at the speed pack and how that works. If we uh, take a look at the speed pack here, here's an example of a sub-assembly that we're going to utilize in an upper level assembly. Uh, as of right now, it's loading completely. You can see that I can make selections of any of the surfaces that I need uh, for SOLIDWORKS at this point. Um, I'm just going to delete this uh, speed pack here and add another one. But how do we add a speed pack? Well, it's done through the configuration manager where you right click on the configuration and add a speed pack. Now, this is where you have the choice of what to include. It's going to include the graphical data by default, but we choose what body data gets loaded. Now in this case, let's just say I grabbed a few holes that we're going to use to mate up to another system or another sub-assembly. So I'm essentially picking a few things that I want to be embedded from the part into the assembly. Now there are some tools in here that will allow you to pick entire bodies or entire parts. Um, there's also a quick include function which basically just uses an algorithm to figure out uh, largest and smallest components to include uh, in this, uh, more or less detail essentially. Um, when you are done creating the speed pack, it shows up as a derived configuration in the configuration manager. Now the symbol will be different. It's, it's pretty clear that it's different. But when I go in the graphics area, 
you can see that the symbol does change slightly um, as I'm mousing over the geometry. And you'll notice I try to select things. I'm actually clicking my mouse. It's not allowing me to select. Okay. Um, at some point, uh, let's edit my speed bag. Yeah, I got everything. Um, at some point, I might want to make some selections to the surfaces that I have here. Now, one way to view what I have accessible to me is to turn on <coughs> what we call the graphic circle. So this, uh, if I search on Speedpack, there's Display Speedpack Graphic Circle. If I turn this on, what this does as I mouse over is it shows me what data is loaded into memory. So as I moused over that, the graphical data that I told you is loaded automatically is unloaded behind the circle, but the body data, the faces and surfaces are loaded uh, so you can see exactly what's there. Now, another way to deal with this circle uh, is a shortcut keyboard, Alt-S. Now, mine seems to flicker for some reason on my screen. I'm not sure why. But if I hold down Alt-S, it does bypass the graphic circle so you can see everything. So if you wanted to leave that on, you could still have that. Now, what do we do with the speed pack from here? Well, here's where you would open up that next level assembly. In this case, this sub-assembly here. Um, for the configuration, uh, I could choose the configuration I want to open it to. In this case, I'm just going to open it to the... Uh, speed pack config and you'll notice when I jump in uh, the assembly the feature tree has the same speed pack symbol this is because we can use a speed pack in an upper level assembly these are sub assemblies that have already been speed packed if I wanted to take a look at those you'll notice as I start to mouse over I can still make some selections but only on the data that is loaded uh, for these configurations. So there is a, a bit of data loaded here. Um, this symbol that you're seeing over the one is essentially telling us that the speed pack is out of date, that there may have been changes to the model and the speed pack hasn't been updated. Well, I could just right click on that speed pack and here I'll find some options associated with speed pack. First of all, it allows me to do an update, which essentially opens up <coughs> the model data and make sure that the surfaces, the body data that you said to include, is now included. And you'll see in just a moment that that information does go away. Now, I can also right click on the here and set the speed pack to the parent, which essentially fully resolves to everything. And I'll do that just in a moment here. So let's go ahead and insert my 0027 into the upper level assembly. And you can see that it is the speed pack configuration. Now, no, notice uh, when I right click, I have the ability to set the speed pack to the parent as well. So now that I'm in the assembly, you'll notice I cannot select these other surfaces of this model, but I can select the, one, the body data I told to load. So what this helps me to do is now when I'm using this assembly in an upper level, I can go ahead and use it to mate and position components. Now what I just did here is I went ahead and mated uh, coincident. I'm just going to flip the mate here. And then I can line up some of the holes. Now the holes in this case, it's this hole. And I loaded some of the holes in the speed pack so that I can mate it up. Now I'm going to leave that thing uh, kind of hanging there for a moment. Uh, you can see the only way for me to, to really rotate this thing is to make sure I'm grabbing uh, the surface. Now what if I needed another surface to load? Uh, so that I can mate it too. Well, 
I mentioned with lightweight, it automatically loads what you need. Well, here in Speedpack, it doesn't. So what I have to do is I have to go back to the assembly, the sub-assembly in this case, go to the Speedpack configuration, and right-click on it, you'll find an Edit Speedpack. Here's where I can choose to load other data. Maybe I want to load this body because we're going to make something around it. Now when I go back to the assembly, you'll notice that this is able to be selected, but the rest of those components here, I can pick right through them. So you can go back and forth and load and unload with Speedpack. Okay? Now that being said, if I were to send you this speed packed assembly now, I don't have to send any of the parts because everything is speed packed. Okay. Um, all the data exists in those sub assemblies, which are all at this upper level. Okay. So you can speed pack a speed pack. Now, even if I go up another level, I can now speed pack this if I wanted to. Right. So now I have this upper level assembly that I can add a speed pack to. Now you can only load uh, the bits of data in here that, that are loaded at this upper level, but uh, you can speed pack a speed pack and go further with it, okay? So a <coughs> little bit more in this conversation. Uh, just want you to remember uh, the increase in file size for speed pack. I think if you have a large enough assembly uh, the file size is not the biggest concern. Uh, it's the load and unload times and, and mating at upper level assemblies. Um, the graphic circle, the Alt-S uh, to be able to view it. A uh, couple other uh, things to be aware of. Uh, speed pack and routing. Uh, if you speed pack a sub-assembly, uh, that was used for routing. The uh, R points and C points used for the routing product do not get loaded, so you won't be able to speed pack those individual components. Uh, that's a little bit of an existing issue. Uh, but I think uh, both of these technologies have their, their space. Uh, speed pack, I would use a majority of the time when I'm putting sub-assemblies and upper-level assemblies, and I just don't need all that extra data, or I'm trying to send my assembly to a vendor who's going to put it in their machine, and I only want to include the mating surfaces. Um, I don't have to give them all the files. So they, they, they both have their fit, and uh, I think if you, you give them a shot, uh, you'll find some things that you're like, eh, what's going on here? But uh, they're very easily ability to load all the data just as you typically would. So I usually don't find any reason not to work in them uh, as long as you understand that you are. So um, that's what I had today, speed pack and lightweight. Hopefully I gave you a few uh, tips and tricks here. I want to thank you for attending uh, today's session. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.